In the last video, I revealed my server room. Now it's time to go into some more technical details about the networking and storage equipment being used. Most importantly is the UPS. I'm using an APC Smart UPS 3000 RM. It was manufactured in March 2007, which makes it almost 18 years old. These units are great as they allow you to swap out the battery cells with generic off-the-shelf ones when they no longer hold a charge. I think I've probably been through three sets of batteries since I got it second hand when it was probably about four years old. This unit has been sitting idle for about six months and when I tried to power it on, nothing happened. On further inspection, it seems these sealed battery cells have leaked and that's not good. I resolved this by taking it to a battery retailer and they replaced them for me and cleaned up any corrosion that happened. So now I'm comfortable knowing I have battery backup when the power goes out. Next up is the networking equipment. But before I get to that, I want to talk about storage. When I was in IT, I had a dedicated VMware ESXi server that I had connected to some QNAP NAS boxes using 10 gigabit SFP plus Ethernet. When I retired from IT, I used one of these units for general file storage, as the NAS boxes also had 1 gigabit Ethernet and at the house we were renting, there wasn't room to have the 10 gigabit switches running. Anyways, to cut to the chase, I wanted to know what shelf spacing to use as I was going to have two of the SAN units facing outwards for easy access. These QNAP NAS units are the TS831X model. It has eight 3.5 inch hard drive bays, two 1 gig Ethernet and two 10 gig SFP plus Ethernet. One of the units is my general file storage and also the home for TV shows and movies. I keep this unit simple. It's four pairs of mirrored drives. It might seem like a waste of space, but I feel it's the simplest and safest. The other unit I reset to factory defaults and set it up as an entire RAID 6 volume. I'm going to be using this as storage for the raw footage from videos and captured game content. It has five three terabyte and three four terabyte 7200 RPM drives. So, those four terabyte drives are wasting one terabyte each being in a RAID 6, but it's what I had on hand and I didn't want to spend any money. So all up, I have 15.8 terabytes of usable space. Anyways, the server and the NAS units were connected to a 12 port Dell X4012 10 gigabit SFP plus Ethernet switch. I purchased this back in 2016 and it was quite an affordable product for that time period. It is half the width of a normal rack switch and there was nothing else like it in the market in that price bracket. So this is going to be the backbone of my network, a 10 gigabit SFP plus switch. To connect all my non 10 gig equipment, I'm using this Horico 8 port 2.5 gigabit switch that has one 10 gig SFP plus port. This allows a fast uplink to the 10 gigabit network. My internet connectivity is through this Decisio A10 firewall that has PFSense installed on it. When I first moved into the house, I connected it to the NBN fixed wireless aerial. However, the service quality of that was terrible. When it came around to wanting to resume streaming on Twitch, I bought a Starlink satellite and I've not looked back since. It's extremely reliable. Occasionally I'll get dropouts lasting about a minute. However, this infrequently happens when streaming. Anyways, I've connected the Decisa A10 firewall to the 10 gigabit switch using this SFP to RJ45 connector, as the switch allows you to set a port to 1 gigabit speed. I like this approach as the internet is connected into the 10 gigabit backbone switch. Lastly, for Wi-Fi, I'm sticking with this Google Nest Wi-Fi router and access point. I purchased this when Louise and I moved in together, and I soon worked out that it doesn't allow much customization. It just needs to be the main router for its network. You can't just make it a Wi-Fi backbone only. So, with its WAN port connected to the 2.5 gigabit switch, it runs as an isolated network. However, this doesn't really seem to be an issue. It actually separates the Wi-Fi devices from my network, and Wi-Fi connectivity throughout the house is quite nice. In the future, I would like to replace it with something more customizable, but at the moment it works just fine. On that note, it's time to wrap it up for this episode. Now that I've explained my core networking and storage setup, 
in the next episode, I'm ready for the big reveal. Drop me a comment if you think you've guessed it. I'll be surprised if you are correct. Until next time, bye!